Back in 2006, Volvo launched the C30, a car which had its fans but wasn't exactly universally popular. So, as sometimes needs to happen when a family member isn't well liked, Volvo have decided to kill it off and instead bring the world a brand new competitor in the compact premium segment to take on the likes of the BMW 1 Series, Audi's A3 and the soon to be launched Mercedes-Benz A-Class. This is the V40. The five-door, five-seat premium hatchback, as Volvo likes to call it, is already on sale and it comes in both petrol and diesel flavors with manual or automatic gearboxes. We flew down to a very unpleasant George for a drive in the first Volvo produced under the reins of the company's new Chinese owners. And while that little fact might strike fear into the heart of any car lover, the V40 manages to impress almost immediately. Of course, you can't talk about Volvo for too long without mentioning safety. And Volvo will tell you that this is the safest and smartest car that they've ever built. It's got systems that we all know about, like city safety, that'll bring a car to a stop under a certain speed to prevent a collision. It's got a lane departure system. It's got a blind spot warning system. But it's also got a radar and camera-based system that will not only recognize pedestrians, but will predict if they're gonna step into the path of the car. And under a certain speed, it'll bring a car to a complete stop if they do. But if they don't, Volvo have designed a car with airbags for pedestrians. It works the same as any other airbag, except that it's outside the car. When it detects an impact, the rear of the bonnet is released and an airbag pops out, covering the bottom of the windscreen and the A-pillars. While I'm perplexed at Volvo making you pay for things that are essentially there to protect stupid people, I will say that there are a lot of other things in here that are absolutely worth it, like its ability to read and then display speed limit signs on the dashboard. The V40 is undoubtedly a good-looking machine. It's got the new Volvo face together with some cleverly packaged elements like the LEDs and the gloss plastic bits. Even the functional aerodynamic wheels look good. But it's let down to a certain extent by this side. Where its competition looks sporty and dynamic, the rear end of this car make it look like a small station wagon. From what I'm led to believe, that's a particular sore point with the designers, but there's no getting away from it. This car just doesn't have the youthful appeal of the others in this corner of the market. But then again, Volvo as a brand doesn't really have that appeal either. On pure aesthetics alone though, the V40 certainly has its own charms, and it has a lot of elements that make it stand out as unique. The interior too has a unique element, albeit a tired one. I'm really looking forward to the day that Volvo redesigns this centre stack. Although today is not that day. For all its clever minimalism and unfussiness, it really is time for a rethink. And I don't understand their stubbornness either. It's not like they haven't moved on with other elements in here. The gear shift is a clear plastic LED encrusted thing. And look at this, gone are the analog instruments in favor of a TFT setup that does little dances and changes colors. Much like the Passe floating center console, if you've stepped into any Volvo in the last 10 years, you'll know what to expect. The design may not be the freshest, but it's well put together and nicely finished. Space in the back is about right for this class, but the boot is a little smaller than you'd expect given the aforementioned station wagon bias. Its capacity is helped by a double layer floor and the inclusion of a space saver spare. Weather aside, it was turning out to be a good drive. The impression from the 2 litre 5 cylinder isn't so much that it's particularly strong, but that it's more effortless. And this car's only done a thousand Ks. With 110 kilowatts and 350 newton meters, it pushes the car along without any hassle at all. And it's helped in part by a great gearbox, which for a regular automatic is very quick and very responsive and very well sorted. My memories of the previous Geartronic attempt are less than flattering, which makes this new one even more impressive. Our D3 test car remained keen and sure-footed on a pretty challenging route, and it felt quicker than its 9.3 0 to 100 time suggests. The combined cycle fuel consumption figure is claimed to be 5.2 litres per 100 k's. I'm not in advertising or marketing, thankfully, but I do have an idea that might help Volvo sell a few more cars. Instead of harping on about things that people already know they're famous for, like safety and being Swedish, they should now tell people they're building cars that are actually fun to drive. I drove the S60 not too long ago, and I was amazed at the sense of real enjoyment and fun I got out of that car. And it's exactly the same in here. 
True, they haven't done all of that at the expense of being safe, but to me, they're missing a trick by not shouting about the joy to be had in their new cars, especially in this market segment where people want a bit of a driver's car. The Volvo V40 should give the company's Chinese investors every reason to smile. It's continued the brand's tradition of building the safest cars in the world in a very stylish package. Sure, the interior is overdue for a rethink, but it's well packaged and it's got good spec. The V40 may not have the cool factor of its German rivals, but it's every bit as good to drive. A willing turbo diesel engine and nicely sorted chassis ensure brisk performance and a decent drive, while the Geartronic gearbox adds to the overall enjoyment. The result is a pretty good all-round drive with a strong suit of safety features to match, but there could be more dynamic involvement and the interior is short on innovation.